So philanthropy makes good business sense. That's at least the message from Standard Chartered, the bank behind Seeing is Believing, an investment project which tackles blindness around the world. Seeing is Believing was launched as a staff initiative by Standard Chartered, set out to raise money to restore the sight of 28,000 people ended up raising $1.6 million, reaching twice the number of people it actually set to help out. It now runs 66 projects around the world, operating in South Africa, uh, South America, I should say, Africa and South Asia. Every dollar raised is matched by Standard Chartered. So far, it's actually raised more than $32 million, aims to bump that up to $37 million by next year, reaching 39 million people around the world. So Richard Meddings balances his position as Standard Chartered Finance Chief with the role of Chairman at Seeing as Believing. Jo joins me now. Thank you very much for coming Thank to you, speak Mariam. to us. Thank you. So Standard Chartered has said that community investment is integral to its strategy and it's, it's part of the brand promise to be here for good. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about the sort of rationale behind that philosophy? Um, as you know, Standard Chartered um, operates in about 70 countries. We operate in Asia, in Africa, in the Middle East. And the way we make money and make profit and the, the way we offer banking is part of what we do. But actually being part of the community that we serve as a bank is also a key, a key role. And Seeing is Believing is a very good example of that, that um, in the world there are 39 pe million people who are, who are blind and 80% of that is curable. And if you think that the cost of curing someone who's blind because of cataract is only £20. So for £20 you can help someone who today is blind then to see is hugely powerful. Now we do that, we do um, awareness on HIV AIDS, we, mm. uh, we provide six million anti-malaria treated nets in, into Africa and these are markets in which we operate. Yeah, and I'm curious about that because obviously you know Standard Charters as an institution very active, uh, has a very strong presence in emerging markets and does that impact where, where you like to invest your money when it comes to philanthropy and, and charity? The, um, the work we do in the community is in the footprint um, where we operate so absolutely there's a, uh, a correlation there. Um, you asked earlier about um, what, what other benefits, business benefits, I mean it's very interesting when people come to join us, either graduates or people in mid-career, one of the reasons they come to Standard Chartered actually is because of this work we do in the community, it, it acts if you like as a an intangible cement to the culture of the bank. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wondering, do you feel like there is enough awareness out there, enough of an understanding about the commercial benefits for companies from strategies which have a sort of a broader social value, if you like? Um, I think there is actually um, significant awareness of the roles that good and responsible corporates play in terms of support to the communities in which they operate, and it's a key role um, for Standard Chartered. I mean, one of the things we're doing here in London um, in mid-July is with a sponsor of the Great City Race. The Great City Race has run since 2005, no pun intended on run. Um, I'm going to ask you to run in it. It's only five kilometres. My goodness, yes. And we use That's that. It's a lot for some people. Probably. It's a lot for some people. <laughs> I, I do it. Um, and it's five kilometres and we raise money for seeing as believing. You mentioned earlier, and it's very important, one of the things behind seeing, seeing as believing success is the fact that the bank, Standard Chartered, will match dollar for dollar every donation that we raise and so we will by the end of this year have raised 37 million dollars yeah. we'll have cured 2.75 million people who were blind with cataracts who couldn't yeah. see and now can and it's a, it's a very admirable cause um, but I actually wanted to ask you to was speaking about your presence in emerging markets in yeah. Asia and I if it's okay with you, I wanted to ask you to put your other hat on, right. um, if you like, and ask you a little bit about China because we had some trade data today just coming in, you know, less than estimated. Uh, what are your expectations in terms of longer term trends, concerns about a broader slowdown in that country? Um, it's important to put it into context first. I think it's quite clear that the global economy is slowing. And if you work from west to east, you see some very difficult data in the US last week. Um, Europe is clearly in, in, in signi under significant pressure. And then you go across to Asia. And I was in Hong Kong a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and the mood is very confident. Now, Hong Kong is confident because China still has very good growth. And I agree that the data may have been slightly down. Mm -hmm. But actually, it still underpinned a GDP growth expectation for China this year of over 9%. China is managing um, to keep its economy going at a very good rate. It is dealing with high inflation. It's using That's monetary. a key risk, I guess, isn't it? It is a key risk, but it has very strong um, financial and fiscal reserves. 
um, it has good mon monetary policy tools to deploy and it will do that. So we think the world continues to slow, but China remains a key component, key constituent in driving um, global economic growth. And I guess the other argument would be, you know, the fact that the trade surplus came in smaller than estimated. You know, maybe that's a positive sign, uh, but given that China has come under a great deal of pressure to rebalance its economy to do more to boost domestic spending. Um, you saw um, in the 12th um, government um, plan, national plan, a very real shift in policy in China towards um, promoting internal consumption. And I think we will see that come through. Um, the Chinese are um, very able, um, very directive um, in terms of how they manage their economy. For Standard Chartered, operating um, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, a key component, uh, component of which is China, um, we have high confidence that um, China will continue to grow at good rate and underpin, therefore, trade and also intra-Asian trade. Great to get your thoughts on that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard Medding, CFO, Standard Chartered Bank.